Good morning, good afternoon, and evening baseball fans. Welcome back to the Barstool Baseball Show. It is Carl. I am joined by Hubs, Clemmer, Casalani. And boys, we're getting ready for Game 7 in the ALCS. A lot of people on this show thought it wasn't possible. It's happening. We're going to do a fresh power rankings 1 through 4 uh, for the remaining teams in baseball. Do we think the playoffs have gotten better since the last time the four of us got to got together? Hubs, I'll start with you. Yeah. I mean, as the person who said the series was going to go seven, and as the person who said the Dimex were going to win a few games, I'm pleasantly surprised to be right and uh, and happy. And uh, yeah, this has been great. Tonight's game was pretty good. Until, you know, the final scores didn't say that, but it was tight, obviously, throughout. Um, the Arizona games, I think, have been really good. Um, the Philly crowd was great. I'm having a good time. Before this, it wasn't good. People were called us out on Instagram and all this. So like, I don't know, open your eyes and look look what we've been watching. Like, it wasn't good before these two series. These two series have been awesome. Like, all right, here we go. This is October baseball. This this field the little clerk strike tonight. A strikeout tonight was unreal. Like the the energy that he brought out there, like that all felt like a true vintage October moment. Um, so I'm stoked and and I'm happy that obviously Texas won the next. I won the game seven, but also we get one more day of two games, which I like. Uh, of obviously, I love. I, you know, people were bitching about the Arizona start time. Uh, I forget what game it was. Where it's two p.m. local. I was like, I don't know, man. I get to go home and I can see crunch time baseball. Love that. Like, I didn't really have a problem with it. So tomorrow, I think it's what five o'clock Phillies. Yeah, five p.m. Eight. Monday is the Eastern time game, or That's five p.m. Perfect. Phillies. And then the ALCS game seven is eight o'clock Eastern time. Yep. I believe Clemmer, you you were kind of a you know you didn't think it would go this far, but I'm I know you love that we have a game seven. I, okay, yeah, I didn't say. I think I did say this, the series would go far. I don't remember saying. No, I never no, 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 I no, said, no, no. I, you I you absolutely. Going, hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on a second. Okay, you you absolutely cool. came in here last week and go. There's no way this goes seven games. Castellani, Castellani, am I right or wrong about this? Yeah, he so, did. He, 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 I did that I'm wrong. Obviously, yeah. he was emphatic about it. Yeah. You, you were, you were like emphatic, and I go, "How the so fuck are you going to say that?" that? No, 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 I'll, I'll drop in, even though that's a question. Okay. Okay, fine. Then I'll tell you. I go, I go, I, I, I go. Who, who are you to say it can't go seven? Yeah, guys, it's been, it's been right. I, I got to talk here. Okay, so first off, I definitely said. And I guess it's going to be like, oh, here's the point out every single thing Chris says is wrong. You know, everybody else can say things wrong, and that's fine. First off, I definitely said I thought the Phillies were much better to see the Diamondbacks. I thought that game, I thought that series could be a sweep. I said that from the outset. The Diamondbacks, give them a lot of credit. Like, especially Brandon Fott, like, that, that game was outstanding. If he's going to level up like that, he's going to pitch like that next year. The Diamondbacks have that front three under the contract the next two years. If you're in the National League West, you better be scared. Because that kid was... That wasn't just uh, like, oh, he had a good start or like kind of like, remember Jarrett Wright, 97? Oh, he's good. He, and he was good. This was electric. Nine strikeouts, no walks, like sensational. Awesome game. And honestly, the one game the Dimebacks lost was the game I thought they could win. And that was game five, a gallon on the hill. Uh, but as far as the Astros, um, Rangers, I mean, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how I felt before going in. Like, I don't know how this series is going to go. I bet on the Rangers because they were plus 120 because I really had no feel for this series. Now, when the range dropped 2 0, yeah, of course. I'm like, oh, fuck, this looks over. I think everyone kind of felt that way. I think. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Dude, All right, in the you, office, you guys are, you guys the, are knows your dominance of baseball. No, I think no, no, most no. human beings. Boris have a conversation, but in the office, I, we were talked about it, and you felt like the series was dead over, I think, after game three, uh, even when Houston got one back. And I was telling you, like, Houston's not going away here. And the part where, where we talked last week, I basically said, I think it's going seven. These teams are dead even. And you were like, like, you, you just I remember that, yes. that whole line. And I was. I just said, because seven's hard to do. It's hard to get to seven games. I did say that. You're right. I remember saying that. Now, um, did I think not one fucking home team was going to win a game? No. Yeah, this no, is me either. insane. I don't know what's happening. But yeah. No, I just think seven game series, they're just rare. And we're so blessed to get it. Tomorrow's going to be an awesome day for Burn. People hear this. Today's going to be an awesome day for baseball. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. I did say that. You're, you're right. But I didn't say it. It wasn't so much about the teams. It was more just that like seven-game series are hard to do. I definitely thought going into the series, the Rangers and Astros were close. When the Rangers went up 2-0, and the Rangers are throwing out, and the Astros are throwing out, like, Jose or Quidi, and it's like, I don't, I, I even said on Pick Central a number of times, like, I don't see a pass how the Astros win. Well, <laughs> the Astros went and took care of business in Texas. It's like, oh, fuck. Um, uh, Hubs was exactly right about this game being much closer than 9-2, to obviously, because that uh, that Leclerc strikeout was is incredible. That was some 
it was a great game of baseball for eight innings or whatever. And then the ninth, I got out of, out of the way. But um, I'm super excited for tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Um, the playoffs are so, obviously, this, these playoffs have been incredible. These L- the LCS. The first yes. two rounds were horrible. Like, I don't think it's even something we can even argue about. It's just a fact. No, the, the last four days of baseball validated our opinions from last week, which is like, like, I don't like it when people act like you can't criticize baseball just because you love it. Like, I love this sport. I love this sport so much that I know how electric playoff baseball can be. And it was bad. The first two rounds were non-competitive games. Even the first two games of the ALCS were relatively non-competitive. It was that that Brandon Fott game where all of a sudden it was like the baseball gods just said, Oh, we've been sleeping for a bit. All right, let's turn it on. Because even the Diamondback series has been way better than uh, I expected it to be. And this series obviously going seven, seven games. I mean, how about this, guys? These two teams, same record in the regular season. Six games to try to decide this thing. Haven't done it. Astros, elite on the road, not so good at home. Now, it, it, it feels like it was almost fate for it to come down. It had to come down to this game to decide who's who. Wouldn't have it any other way. It's going uh, to be electric. Hey, how about Bruce Bochy? Could be going first season back, right back to the World Series. And I know we actually gave him so much credit at the start of the season that it turned into some kind of joke that, like, we didn't talk about Bruce Bochy if we're talking about the Rangers. But, I mean, now there is kind of this reality. He t- he takes Eovoldi out. I thought that was a horrendous decision at the time because he was pumping strikes. <clears throat> and, of course, whoever Spores is. Spores, yep. Yeah, I mean, just... Of course, he- Bochi makes the right decision. So electric theater for baseball tonight. I do want to call this out. The Adoles Garcia home run at the end. It's just great drama. I thought we were going to get a platinum sombrero. You rarely see a hat trick. You rarely see a golden sombrero. I thought we were going for five. I really thought we were going to get the precious medals out. <laughs> oh, my friends. He tagged that ball. And I think it was a cool moment as an independent outsider just like off the bat, you're like, man, those Astros fans are getting for the exits. Uh, that was a great moment. But as we kind of look ahead, what do you guys think? Adoles Garcia, is he, is he MV, who's winning the MVP if the Texas Rangers win this? Who wins it if the Astros win it? Can we get some MVP predictions? I, I have my pick. And is it's, it, I guess, go ahead. I was going to guess Jordan Alvarez. If the Astros win, yes. Well, yeah. uh, if the Rangers win, I know he wasn't amazing in either game. To me, Avaldi is so goddamn good. Uh, he just has the biggest balls of any pitcher in baseball maybe right now. I mean, the amount of times in both of these starts that he got into serious trouble. Two men on, bases loaded, nobody out, runners on the corners, and pitched out of it. I think that not only were those outings impressive, but as we saw in Game 5, this Rangers bullpen has a tendency to be a little bit shaky. The length that he's given them has allowed them to win two games, uh, at least two games. Uh, in this series, he would be my pick, but I would have to look at the numbers again and see if there's somebody else's. Here's out. why he'd be my pick. It's because I think he's going to pitch again. <laughs> you think he pitches tomorrow out of the pen? Oh yeah. Oh, he yeah. Might. Why he's do you say fucking, he's a fucking crazy person? That's not yeah, crazy at all. Hubs. Well, oh, well, I mean, he's already he pitches this next day. Like in most, yeah, pitch oh, the But I think there would be. I think Bochi is the kind of manager that would let it happen. Um, Nate has done it. I well, I. I guess maybe he hasn't. I wonder if he has done it. I forget with that Boston run, how many? Probably not. But he never went. Def- what he never went back. He never went back to back like that. He but probably he offered had- to though, and he was like, he was willing to do it. And maybe he did warm up a game where he could have got whatever. I could see it totally happening, especially with the state of Texas's pen. Leclerc, Leclerc threw a few uh, bunch of pitches today. Chapman didn't save his bullets. Spores through today. Obviously, he'll be available. Everyone will be available. But I think if they need an inning. He's going to definitely have a conversation with him in the morning. Like, hey, how you feeling? Feel good? All right, I can give you an inning. And he'll be out there. And he's warming up. And he gets an, an inning there. He those two starts, then an inning, and he's yeah, yeah, it's hard to I, argue. I, it's tough to argue that. Uh, I'm looking right now. By the way, Ivaldi did come into a game. I'm just uh, checking here. And uh, he lost. He did terrible, actually, in the 2021 LCS against the Astros. Yes, um did. He he did, but he did volunteer to throw, which you got to give the guy credit for. And then he actually went back and started a couple of days later the game six, which they lost. But it wasn't his fault. He only a lot of one run. Um, yeah, I, MVP. I, it's hard. I mean, I always go back to like the game seven has to take place. We have to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're making predictions. One thing I do want to mention: the lines out for game seven here, Astros minus one thirty. Yeah. Um, so Rangers what's, are plus one ten. What's the pitching matchup? It's going to be. Hot- Javier Max, Scherzer. Max Scherzer versus Christian Javier. Yeah, which, as someone who has money on the Rangers, terrifies me. That um, line, though, makes me feel good. Yeah. I think, I think Houston should be 150. Me too. 
I have so, no trust. I have no faith in Scherzer, like none. getting any 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 reasonable amount of outs here that that are effective. And Javier is not Evaldi esque in terms of October, but he's pretty fucking close. Yeah, like, favors Javier. favors the lineup to see Javier the second time. It, it favors yeah, yeah. The, the lineup's in a much better position because he's so powerful and does not change speeds as much. So it's more of a timing thing and like trying to pick up the fastball spin. But so Houston's I think that gonna Rangers, be, Houston's yeah. gonna be chopping at the bit to see Scherzer in the same end, you know? Sure, but I think Scherzer is harder to figure out the second time around. I think Scherzer has a has a slight advantage the second time around over Christian Javier. And I, I don't know what the splits are on the road. I do like how aggressive the Texas Rangers lineup has been and how much production they've gotten from everybody in that lineup. It seems like everybody's doing it. It's not like they've Almost just got to a fault. Like right. those those Texas games, like in, in Texas. Man, there were so many opportunities, I feel like, where Simeon and Seager were coming up to the plate. And in huge moments, there was one specifically, I remember, and and they get out. It was like first and second or whatever, one out, or maybe even second and third. And, or maybe, it's, I forget exactly the situation, but they were met on. And they both swung the first pitch and popped it up. And it's just like, damn if you, damn if you don't, right? Like, you, you love the work account, but also, like, that's what got them here is that they're aggressive. So you, you can't really change it up. It's just like, that's how, that's how they got here. So, yeah. but sometimes it's like, fuck. Like, you just had them on the ropes, and it's been 45 seconds, and we're at commercial break. Right. So that happens. So one thing about tomorrow is um, we're talking about maybe seeing Evald, maybe like in the ninth, you know, kind of like what we saw, like, you know, uh, yeah, 2001, game seven with right, the Dynamax. Um, But uh, Dane Dunning, I think you're going to see a lot of him tomorrow. I don't, yeah. I mean, Scherzer went four innings. That first game pitch, he did not look good. He gave it five runs. Um, they pulled him. I, obviously, tomorrow, it's all, all gas, no break. You got to figure it out. Dane Dunning is going on three days rest. He did pitch two and two thirds inning. Um, he did not pitch well. I, I wonder if you will see, especially with Keeney pitching the ninth tonight. Obviously, they have Chapman fully rested for tomorrow as well. But and uh, you know, Leclerc in theory only pitched two thirds inning, although it was all pretty you know pretty high stress pitches. Yeah. Um, I do wonder if you'll see you know Scherzer go three, Dunning go two, and then figure it out. Yeah. Well, let's let's see. I mean. They don't really have met many options, which is why I think the bats show up in that first, second, third inning really aggressively for the Rangers like they have been. They've Can been the most aggressive team. Can you what? Can we make fun of Dusty Baker for being uh, uh, just a shitty manager uh, every today? Uh, All right, John I will. Singleton love is weird, man. Pitching <laughs> coaching Montero, too. Is Montero yes, so yes. On, on the yeah. bench. Like, what are we doing? Uh, I, I, we were talking about it in the, in the chat, and, like, Diaz is fucking 599 against ratings this year. Yeah, Why it's all you... year too. It's 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 bizarre. Mm-hmm. And you brought the point: is Singleton the worst player in the whole league? <laughs> it's just, in history, it's, you could make a case John Singleton's the worst player in baseball history. It's, it's, it's an aggressive take. <laughs> it's an argue, that's, you that's have the so aggressive, though. Why? You know what? It's almost so he's, aggressive. He's cost a shitload of money, and he sucks. It's, it's almost so aggressive that Watchy does something in Game Seven, similar to how thought <laughs> he said was the worst pitcher ever, and then he showed up. I, no, okay, uh, I never no, said. I, this I is, I you did say he was the. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You said he was the worst. You said he was the worst pitcher to pitch a game one. You said he was the worst pitcher to pitch game one. Right. I didn't even say that. I said he was the worst starter to start a game one in this century. I never said he's the worst pitcher ever. I've been on record saying he's going to have a very nice career as a four. You roll your eyes out. Well, you're just saying these aren't true. I said that with like a smile on my face. That was just a needle. No, he, like, people you listening to all the time. I don't. I, okay, let's just say Brandon Fott was listening to this. Do you think he'd feel better if instead of it being like, oh, he didn't yeah. call me the worst pitcher ever, I don't, he I called don't me the know. worst game one starter of the last 23 years? Oh, what, what nuanced and distinction, Clemmer? It was a it, based on ERA. It's a fact. I'm sorry. That's what the numbers tell. I, I'm not trying to be a dick. It's just okay. Fact. Let's go back to the the dusty thing though. So you're yeah. You know, the it, point it, is, Carl, is it yeah. our job to make people feel good? No, it's not. A, it's not our job to make people feel good. I also don't know if it's our job to just make like grant. It's you made a big statement there. I Grandiose. Wrote a word blog about it too. Co- correct. <laughs> correct. And Hubs was like, "Well, you called him the worst pitcher ever." And then you took sincere offense to Hubs, you know, not um, not exhibiting the, the right amount of nuance to say, yeah, you didn't call him the right worst pitcher of all time. It's the worst game one starter You're still insulting. of this century based on data it's that you pulled. So it was like based on it was ba- I used like actual data. I wasn't like trying to be a shithead. Sure. No. And you were, you know, you were right. You I mean, you're right in saying that. 
He had the highest ERA. You compared him to Anthony Reyes. Uh, was a Weaver in there? Jeff yeah. Jared. Yeah, one of them was in there. Jeff. What, it wasn't a great list to be on. It wasn't a great list to be on. Now, you did do a little bit of a media tour after that blog, though, and like followed it up and were like, well, he's just not good. You know, he could have a nice career. He's not good. Like, I don't think you were very. See those things. I okay. don't think I said he, he, he's not good. He had a four year race since August 1st. I never said he was bad. I'm saying if you take the season as a whole, this is not a guy that you want to have start game three for you in the playoffs. I I'll say this. I never thought I'd be in a situation after seeing him pitch earlier in the postseason where I'd be like, wow, they pulled him too early. But I actually did feel that way. Yeah, yeah. I know, like, right? And it's been like, I, I, you know, Zona's pet isn't bad and they've performed very well, obviously. But their real strength to me, and we talked about this and we hit on this, is Ginkle and obviously Seawolf. Getting there is a little bit trickier. I almost would wish a starter would give me as much like as they can and then we get to those guys, you know, as, with as little people as possibly used. And they really, like, chanced and it ended up working out. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, to, to think that this postseason would turn around, we'd be, we'd be like, wow, they pulled thought too early. Like, that's a crazy storyline change for sure. It's a crazy sport. And I do want to get back to the power. I do want to, I shouldn't say get back to, I want to introduce the power ranking aspect. We only have four teams. And this is the structure of the Monday show. So I want to flush some of this out. As we get through the teams, I would assume the group agrees Phillies won because they've got the three two lead going home against oh, and this yeah. is the power rank to win the World Series. So any arguments against the Phillies or would anyone want to make some strong arguments for the Phillies right now? Uh, the only strong argument I'll make for the Phillies, because we keep talking about, you know, I mean, Schwarber's had this insane series to talk about guys who are going to be MVP, Kyle Schwarber in that series with the five home runs. Uh, I brought it up earlier. Zach Wheeler is unbelievable. Like, how is it Zach Wheeler is still to me underrated? Like, he, I, I want that. I want that guy getting the ball as much as possible. He has the lowest whip, I believe, in the history of postseason baseball for a starter. Minimum ten starts. Uh, uh, to me, I'm put them number one right now because their game one guy is going to be better than anybody else's game one guy, and that includes Evaldi at this point. He's just been absolutely dealing. Yeah, I don't care if. You know, whatever happened in the ALCS, I would have the Phillies to me are the best team of these four, regardless of whatever the situation are with games or whatever. I think the Phillies are the best of these four teams. Yeah, um, there was a weird little zap of energy, I feel like, in three and four, foot off the gas, something like, you know, whatever. But um, they they got it back together. They they locked back in for game five, you know, treated that as more important than ever. And it was, obviously. Um, there is a little bit of a difference in energy, and rightfully so, with how crazy Philly gets, like, home and road with them. Uh, but still, definitely number one here. You know, they're, they're two home games. They're, they have two home games to win one against the World Series. They're number one. I think it's pretty uh, interesting they, that the Phillies have three wins in the series, and they're against two against Oregon Zach Gale, and the other one's against Merrill Kelly. It's crazy. That is interesting. Yeah. Well, you got Wheeler out there. Wheeler and Nola have looked like Schilling and Johnson. So that's, that's kind of the big difference right now. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, baseball is a, is a it's a crazy sport. I mean, every sport, you know, anytime you truncate things down to a three, five, seven game series, crazy shit happens, and that's kind of what what makes this fun. It makes it frustrating at times, uh, you know, but also can make things fun. It also, you know, that's what's great about baseball playoff baseball is you know seeing seeing some of these kind of strange things happen in these seven game series. Yeah, here's yeah. a strange thing that happened. I thought I thought that uh, Bryce Harper dipped down and Cliff Moreno on the way in, and I got absolutely fucking. Man, you want to talk about some 5,000, 6,000 replies. A lot of people tell me I don't know baseball. Bryce Harper can turn on a 100-mile-an-hour fastball uh, and has the instincts to react as quick as anybody in the sport. He knows the situation he's in. He knows there's a throw coming up the or coming to home plate. He knows there's a play at the plate. He sees Marino, uh, Moreno come up the line. Like, he absolutely put the fucking part of his upper body between his shoulder and his forearm into Moreno's upper body. Now, it's a, he's a great player. He's a phenomenal player. Still a dirty fucking play. He plays hard. I'd want him to do that for me. If, I was, if I'm Rob Thompson, I'm cheering for him. If I'm a Phillies fan, I want to see that. Moreno is in the way. The throw did take him up the line. But it, it, what bothers me is people saying, like, oh, Bryce Harper, what a good guy is going in to check in on Moreno. Like, bro, this is just the way the game is. Moreno's up the line. He fucking clips a guy. It is a little bit of a fucking dirty play. It, but there's something about Bryce Harper where we publicly are like, he's the best. He's such a great guy. We never, like, he plays hard. Moreno was in the way. 
He fucking hit him. He fucking wanted that contact. He put his shoulder and his fucking elbow into him and wanted the contact to score the run because he's a fucking tough, dirty fucking player. What is wrong with people? People tell me I'm a pussy. Fuck you. I'm not a pussy. You got ratioed like you dropped like multiple racial slurs. Like, like what the, the fuck? That was the ratio you got. Did you in there or at least just here? I honestly didn't see the tweets. I did what the word dirty sometimes. Like, so I saw that yeah. I saw nothing wrong with it. I also okay. grew up in the 80s and 90s when like that kind of play was very normal. What are you rolling your eyes for? Because that's what everybody's saying is like, all right, you soft pussy. You obviously didn't watch baseball in the 80s and 90s. They fucking did it then. That didn't make it clean. They just did it. Like, that's part of it, dude. Part of it is I'm fucking coming in here, pal. Like, the rules like, have changed, too. And, and to, to your point, Carl, like, baseball has changed. And, like, you know, the kind of stuff we saw in the 70s with Ray Fossey, that wouldn't fly today. Just like Ray the stuff Fossey. We saw in the 80s and 90s wouldn't fly today. Ray Fossey's a legend. When Ray Fossey was in eighth grade, he played on the high school varsity baseball team. And the fields that they played at were three miles away from campus. And Ray Fossey carried the fucking gear. From eighth grade through wow. senior year of high school to the field every day and would set it up for batting practice and take it back home. Ray Fossey is an all is just a fucking legend in baseball. If you don't know the story, obviously look him up. He got destroyed yeah. by Pete Rose in the 19, what, 70, 71 All-Star game. He ended up winning a All-Star. World Series. Yeah, he, he ended up winning a World Series with the Athletics, but he did get destroyed yeah. in an All Star game by Pete Rose. He won multiple World Series, I think, with the A's, if I'm, if I'm right. <laughs> but but he got he got annihilated in a in an exhibition game. Like that was bullshit. That, that shouldn't have happened. And Ever. just like the stuff in the '80s and '90s, maybe that stuff shouldn't happen. Maybe it is changing for the better. But we are in kind of that weird gray area still, Carl. Where you do have, you know, it, what we say is a dirty play is tough tougher to figure out. Maybe maybe the, I'm just trying to. Un- yeah, I'm trying to unpack it too. I didn't call him a dirty guy. I think he's a great player. I'd want him on my team a thousand out of a thousand times. Um, but yeah, I got, I mean, I'm still getting ratioed. Yeah. I, I, I can't put my, every time I put my, I pick it up, people are just like, you bum, you don't know ball. Yeah. I, I would like to see if anybody telling me I don't know what I'm talking about can throw harder than me right now with greater accuracy. Right now, 36 out of the can. Get that shit go, Carl. I mean, like, no, come on. I know this fucking game. Don't tell me, pal. I still got movement on my two seamer. I can throw a decent fucking change up. I'm not listening to this bullshit. Every, all four of us have gotten you don't know ball at least a thousand times. Yeah, but I fucking know it, Clummer. You know what I mean. Um, I didn't think it was dirty. Um, I, I will, <laughs> did not, didn't think it was dirty. Uh, I'm not gonna say you don't know ball. Um, uh, this is my opinion. Did not think it was dirty. I think it's a pretty tough ask for that to unfold in a much different way, given where the throw was, where he was running. I don't really know what you want Harper to do to really avoid much there. It kind of just was like an un- unfortunate series of events that led to like that collision. Um, but I just, there's like, like he's not going to stop running. It's really tough to ask him in, in the moment there, like running full speed, which he is there, hauling ass down the line. To like you know really change up his path to home plate, um, and it just happened that way. I didn't see it as dirty. Uh, maybe there's like a li- you know once he realizes uh, he's not going to move, then like you know maybe there's a little bit extra. But to me, that's not dirty. It just is what it is. It's more gray area than anything. Um, and it, it, I don't know. Watching it a hundred times, there's really never a moment where I'm like up in arms and be like, man, that was a little. So I don't. Know. That's just how it's. He's playing I'm the still game hard. Question. For you guys, about a different, also kind of aggressive play in baseball. So um, Garcia gets hit yesterday, um, and he doesn't go at the pitcher. He immediately just goes to Maldonado. Yeah, nah. What did you guys think about that? What was that? My guess was that was based on the confrontation that went down earlier in the season when those teams played at Minute Maid Park. Because that's the first time I've ever seen that actually, outside of that one minor league video where the guy just kicks the catcher. Like I, I don't that that's it's pretty rare that you see him turn around to Maldonado. I think personal related beef to yeah. the, uh, the, the altercation these teams had at Minute Maid Park, I think in July. I, I think that's what it's related to. Because you'd think like 99 right there, you're going after you're going after Abreu. Uh, not so much the case. So it was interesting though. I remember my dad pointed out that same thing. I, it's, you rarely see that. Yeah, uh, I like that. Was, I, um, go ahead. I was just going to say, we all think that was intentional, right? Yes. Yes, okay. it was. Okay. God, people keep telling me like, 
It yeah. obviously was. I, I don't care that Houston's like putting on this great acting lesson and everyone's like, why would we do this? Like, <laughs> pretty clearly, it was on a fastball to his back. Like, with yeah. motive. It's just, it's just right, with, with like, oh, okay, that just happened. So, and fastball back is pretty much as clear day and intentional sign. Like, it was a breaking ball. Obviously, things slip. Yeah. Unfortunate. First pitch, too. First, first pitch. pitch. Such a clear, like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, it, in, in hindsight, not smart in that situation. Just give them a runner. But, um, I don't know. <laughs> to me, it was very clear on purpose. Anyone defending them? Like, I don't really know what you're talking about. I like, like when I, you drill a guy like that. I really do. Postseason. No, I know what you're saying, and I know it's going to be like, no, I, I know not in the postseason. I was runners on. Sure, worked out. Runner on base for no reason has never worked in a better way ever for that. It's well, so I know. Fucking, right. it, That's it, why it, I respect it, 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 it because the 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 pitcher has that much confidence in their stuff. That they're like, yeah, I'm going to fucking drill this guy, put him on. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'll K the next three guys if I have to. I'll get out of the gym. I don't care. Me yeah. sending the message for you guys on your behalf supersedes the whatever extra risk and danger I'm putting myself in with runners on base. Mm -hmm. Now, that's stupid baseball. It's stupid oh, baseball. Might really bite him in the ass too tomorrow. Yeah, but I respect like... You know, there is a level of me that does respect it. It's stupid. It's more stupid than I do respect it. But I do want to call out that I think there's something badass about picking up your teammates like that. Where you're like, I don't give a fuck. Fine, fuck it. Um, I'll, two, I'll, two, I'll break this guy's ribs and then I'll strike the next three out. Two things. One, Dusty just refusing to leave the dugout was hilarious. Uh, that was funny. That was just too hilarious. Hilarious. Well, Where do you want me to go? What do you mean? Right. Um and how does this work now? So he appealed, right? Is yep. it is it max forty hours for a decision? So or, that, his, that is his hearing is tomorrow. His yeah. hearing is okay. tomorrow. And so they'll decide at his hearing if he can play in game seven or if he'll have to miss that and miss he the will not play. I'm, I'm telling you right now. He will not play see, game I seven. Say, I don't think he will either. It's a I two game see, suspension. Um, I could see it being reduced to one and right. it's the game seven. Right. So, so but he also could miss game one of the World Series if they go that far. So that he's definitely missing tomorrow. So, can they uh, add more games? Can they come back and add a third? Mm, no. I don't think so. Say, fuck your appeal. Here's the third one. No, that's, that's, like, that's what they do in Russia. Yeah, that's why I have a yes. CBA. <laughs> <laughs> they do in Russia. I, I got to say, though, man, lost in all of that was how impressive Ryan Presley was for those two innings. I mean, yeah. not, just yeah. cut, not just cutting off uh, the rally there in the eighth, but people forget Rangers got two on with nobody out in the ninth. Mm -hmm. He just pitched around. He is... In October, I, he's just a pitcher that was made for it. The way that that ball spins out of his hand, uh, he's he is he's a great closer, man. I've always now, I him. asked you in our preview if you thought he was the best reliever in this series. You said no, Abreu. Now, can I ask you to revise that? If you had to pick, I know Abreu is suspended, but I like Presley's split a lot, right? That's such a nasty pitch to hit. And in this time of the year when hitters are so anxious to put a charge into one and see a ball up, like that's mm -hmm. where the split is so nasty. But man, Abreu throw ninety nine a hundred. So I guess which would be the bigger miss? Would you rather have Abreu or would you rather have Presley for Game Seven? I'd rather have Abreu. Me too. Yeah, I, I think his stuff is better. His numbers are better. Yeah. I love Presley in that role on the back end of the pen. But ultimately, as much as I like him in October, didn't have a great year. Fine year, okay year, solid year. But blew a fair amount of saves. I would I would argue Abreu, if not top five, is at least a top ten reliever in the entire sport. That's a huge loss for them. So then. Who who do we like in Game Seven? We should really do this. Who in our power rankings? We've got the Phillies one. We're almost a half hour into this. We've talked deeply about this Game Seven matchup. We've talked deeply about Game Six. I have no idea where anybody stands on who they like for Game Seven. I'll uh, get my I, prediction first briefly. I like the Rangers in Game Seven. Okay, I I have the Astros. I like Javier here. I don't trust Scherzer. I think if Scherzer doesn't go deep, or if Javier doesn't go deep, you get to a bullpen game. Bochi is a master at this. We could see Montgomery as well. We could see Evaldi, but if we're just going off pure bullpens, I do, even with the Abreu injury, I do favor Houston. Um, and, you know, I, I would say they're playing at home, but I don't think that matters with the way they've played at Minute Maid this year. Not even going to go with the experience thing that Clemmer loves so much. I think Houston is a better team. I think that lineup will, will get it done for them uh, at Minute Maid on Monday. Yeah, I don't, obviously I don't care about, uh, you know, pedigree or anything like that. I, I do care about the fact that 
you roll your eyes. I mean, I don't know why why you roll your eyes. Why, why you roll your eyes, Carl? I guess because I know you love to bring it up that you don't care about the pedigree. Like it's like, yeah, yeah. I know. So like, as you get into your analysis, you like, I would like to remind people I don't care about that. <laughs> right. I want I want to clarify that because Chris brought it up. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is tough. I mean, if you put a gun to my head, I just don't trust Scherzer. Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> I just, I just don't trust Scherzer. I'm just nervous about it. He's, he looks so off that first start. And I think, I think you guys make a, everyone here made really valid points at Christian Javier. Second time seeing him, you can kind of lose that illusion a little bit. At the end of the day, like, yeah, he's having a very nice postseason, but he's not an elite pitcher. I don't think anyone would call him that. Everyone would say he's a, a good pitcher, for, certainly. Um, but I still think he has the edge over Scherzer. I just, Scherzer, just, I just don't trust him. Um, this year has been so weird where like every, every road team wins. I don't even know what that means anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I, this, I, I'm actually just more excited for this for anything, but if you put a gun in my head, I guess to make this uh short answer as long as possible, I, I would say that the Astros barely, I think. Is it, and what's put, put, put you over the line. It's the pedigree, isn't it? You know, it's sure as are being hurt. <laughs> by the way, by the way pedi- I, pedigree, I just want to throw this one, one quick thing out for you. I'll two bet. <laughs> You guys think yeah. Altuve? Oh, it's all pedigree, yeah. right? He, it's he's, not all pedigree. You get that. In order, nobody's saying that because of pedigree, you're going to succeed 100% of the time. I think Altuve in 2023 mm-hmm. is 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 more seasoned to hit in October than Altuve in 2014. Yeah, I get. I mean, he's more seasoned to hit. That's pedigree. No, well, no, he's more seasoned to hit. It's just that's experience. Okay, well, what about this? The nuance, and it's so close in the comparison. That if I have to flip a coin, I guess I would take the guys who... Now, I don't feel this way because I do think the Rangers will jump out early against Christian Javier, and I think Bochi will be able to figure out a way to get the right guys in in the right matchups. I do think that they have a crooked number against Javier through the first three innings, whether it's two, three, or four runs. And I think from there, the Rangers are in control, which is why I would pick the Rangers. But I can also say... That if I was so in between and split and didn't know which one, I would lean in. I would pedigree is not a bad thing to lean into if you're running out of op, comparison option. You know, if you're like, well, I do like Scherzer, I do like Javier, I do like this, I do like that. Well, fucking, they've been there before. They've done it. They're defending champs. Is that that's that's where I would c- go to pedigree. What triggers me with the Altuve thing is Altuve is just a great player. It has nothing to do with pedigree. He's just awesome. He's a. I think I, I wrote a blog, but I think he's the third best second baseman since integration. Like he's incredible. He Indeed. actually is worse in the playoffs. He's his batting average is forty points worse in the playoffs in the regular season, which is fine. He's facing better pitchers. I get it, but it's not like Altuve is this like guy who only shows up and like he's just awesome all the time. That has nothing to do with pedigree, nothing to do with experience. It has to do with just the guy who's just an awesome baseball player. Well, yeah. I would argue somebody like Javier is the antithesis of that. Who's a pretty he's he's good. He's a good major league starter. He of all these like this too elevates his game in the postseason. But I'm going to go down. Presley's like that, yeah. Um, so for me, I don't know because I have so many <laughs> conflicting things. Like I am so worried about Scherzer. Yeah. Now Bochi could have like the shortest leash on him, and that yeah. cut then, but also that puts a shit ton of pressure on everyone else. Maybe you have Jordan Montgomery two days rest. I don't know what kind of safe he's going to be in, but I, if he's pitched a short rest before in the postseason, pretty sure with the Yankees and where it came in relief, he has experience in this. Got a department, maybe not a lot, but uh, on the flip side, Houston's just the home thing is weird. Like it's it's been a it's been a thing all year. It's been a thing in this this series. Um, Kyle Tucker is completely invisible. Yeah. Don't get it. It's one of the best players on the team. Uh, one of the better players on the team, uh, and has always kind of come through. I feel like for them, he's been invisible. And even missing the home run ball in right field today, I thought you know that Smoltz kind of put it like he was kind of gliding rather than running to the spot and jumping and it kind of fucked him. Um, he doesn't robbing one in the ninth inning. Um, yeah. But he's been nowhere. He's three hits in the whole series. That is unlike him completely. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't... I really like Javier in this spot. I hate almost everything else um, with Houston. So... Mm. I'm going to go Texas <laughs> because I want Texas to advance. <laughs> so Fuck. That, it gives us it. a 2-2 two, two split then. So what's the what's the decision here? Do we take the pedigree? I would say I would say what the, the pedigree. 
He's what kind of green? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it to the pedigree. Just well, pedigree, by the way, real quick on pedigree. <laughs> I really use pedigree to get here. Like, similar to how New England did with the AC Championship game, where, like, they just woke up every year, no matter how the regular season was, they were in the AC Championship game. That's kind of what I do with Houston. And then from there, you know, they've lost m- multiple times, obviously, in the, in the yeah. ALCS. So, like, you know, shit happens here, and these teams are fucking dead even, like I thought. So, um, pedigree I'm not using for tomorrow. Like, pe- I think that's all out the way, especially tonight. Like, the way Texas just stormed in there and fucking showed up and, and pitched great in big moments, like, that was very impressive to me. Um, man, I'm also worried the part that makes me lean Houston, I'm not thinking, but Chapman's going to pitch like four outs tomorrow, probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's so terrifying, especially with that first out. And like, let's say he comes in the eighth and has pitched the ninth. That first out takes him 10 or 12 pitches. And then you're like, oh my God, he has to get three more outs. He's going to get 30. Like that is the worst kind of role as Chapman you want out there. And he's been almost, you know, he's been a ticking timer for a big moment. He, I, I, honestly, I was nervous for him to come in in a 5-2 game here. Like, Adolis Garcia hitting the home run, and he doesn't have to come in. That was like, oh, big relief for Texas fans. But I just still lean Texas because Corey Seager is a huge fucking big-time player that I think shows up on this moment. I don't, I don't really know. Okay, so you lean Texas. I love Texas. Clemmer, you lean Houston? Barely. I don't know. I could easily, if you guys... I could easily go Texas. I, I don't I don't know. I want Texas to win. Um, but I don't know. I, I I'm very undecided. I'm not trying to be, you know, I mean, usually I'm I'm the one making all the you know, the takes yeah. that everyone's yelling at me about. I don't have an opinion here. I don't know, which is, makes it kind of exciting and fun. Yeah, that's that's what you want out of a game seven. Yeah, like, like, I don't want to have an opinion in a game seven. I just like, kind of like, want to see it unfold. Well, how yeah. about we take the road team then because uh, road teams have won every game this series? Fair. That's fair. Yeah, and I think I think the arguments we've made. Was, well, I'm thinking I, about the graphic because I got to put this on YouTube and you got to upload I, the I graphic. I, so, like, you think we got to get the graphic updated here, guys? Yeah, no, that's yeah, fair. I, 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 okay, I'll ask you guys this: Do you guys remember going into a game seven where it's this much of a coin toss at least going in? No, I'm sure. I, I, I'm sure there are some. I just can't think of one. And part of I, that, I the series has been so weird. I remember 2016 just having no clue who was going to – Cubs, Cubs, Indians having no clue how that was going to go. Was, Kluber, Kluber had pitched so well, I yeah. wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if he, he, he was worn down. Good, that's was, a good one, Chris. But, but I would say that was the last time, and especially because the Cubs had won two games, including one game in Cleveland. That was the last time where I'm like, I had to throw my hands up and say, I have absolutely no clue who's coming out here. That, that was, was a great a, game. That was a lock. Never Best baseball doubt. game I've ever seen. Oh, never in doubt. Yeah, never, <laughs> never in doubt. Shout out Rockwell. 3,300 North. I think 3,300 North. I don't know. It was a hazy day. Big memories. Uh, okay. So we have we have Rangers here questionably at 2A. Astros at 2B. Diamondbacks clearly in a four spot. Diamondbacks could give us a game seven. We could have two game sevens. And the reason yeah, I say that confidently is if Joe Man apply in the in the Diamondbacks bullpen can shut down the Phillies enough and Zach Gallen can't, then like who am I to say anything about what I know going into a game six in Philly? I know nothing. I know nothing. I don't think Merrill Carley ha- Merrill Carley has it in the witness game. <laughs> Just, why? Why, are you, so. why are you against Kelly? I just didn't like how he looked in the other game. Felt like mm. he, you know, got to him. Uh, it's going to be just as louder, uh, just as loud, if not louder. Um, I don't like the what spot. Does that matter? I'm not trying to be dev- difficult here, but like, who cares if it's loud or quiet? No, I'm just, just saying that's going to be a very that's... hostile environment. I think it's going to be a hostile environment. He didn't pitch well in it, and he didn't pitch well in the World Baseball Classic environment with that. So. I don't know. I, I just don't have a. I don't. I don't like him in this spot. I don't think he goes in the Philly and, and keeps this series around. I will say we really didn't touch on him. But Zach Gallon, man, has really just. Yeah, he had some moments to really show up here, and Zach Gallon did not show up. Like the Phillies, just I never really had much faith in him in that game five. Like I just like, yeah. and I know he did uh, kind of settle down, and you know the first inning was a little fluky, but. I don't know. They eventually clocked them, and I, I, I don't know, man. It, it's, it sucks to see. I want Zach Gallon to succeed, um, but that he has not shown up when he needs it. Would, would I get in trouble for saying I don't think he's like on the a, a great, great, great pitcher? Like, is uh, what do you mean by that? Like, I think Wheeler is a much better pitcher than Zach Gallon. Much better. 
Yeah, and I would much rather have Wheeler. Yeah, he looked he looks much better right now in the playoffs. Over a course of the season, I don't know if you can say the same thing. Right now, Zach Wheeler is throwing better than Zach Allen. Yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah. a fair way to look at it. Right. And has every year since like 2018. <laughs> no, last year, no. Allen was incredible. No, no. That's not good, Chris. Allen was, he not was better no. in the regular season last year than Wheeler was. No, I'm not doing this. Okay. No, and, and, but I mean, Zach Wheeler is obviously much better right now. And here's the thing. This is why I kind of, the Merrill Kelly thing. I don't think it was the crowd being loud. I no, think I just don't think he's good enough to beat them. That's the thing. That, the that's, all, no, that's also it. I, I just it's, don't think he's good enough to beat them. I don't think his stuff matches up well for them. If Schwarber's going to be Schwarber and do these Schwarber things, I don't know if anyone can beat him. I mean, yeah. I mean Trey Turner owns this man. Do we, do we, have we talked about, like, like I don't know if we did, but Trey Turner's numbers against him are crazy. <laughs> Like they are, it's 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 ownage to like a, a degree. Like I haven't seen in a long time. Let me pull it up. Real quick. Um, mm. Yeah, what? What? He mm, he owns everybody this time of year, doesn't he? Trey Turner. This is so far this year. No, yeah, like, like this is career. Oh, career. Um, uh, Merrill Kelly. Look Ten it up. Twenty two. <laughs> with a homer and seven RBIs and five walks. That's 455 bag average, 556 on base, 1283 OPS. That so is all 700 off of him? That is ownage. Would you rather have Trey Turner or Corbin Carroll? Uh, long term, Corbin Carroll. This, no, like this for right tomorrow. Now? For tomorrow. Trey Turner. Trey Turner. Trey Turner. Trey Turner against Kelly. You got it. It's 10 for 22. Hey, Clemmer's thinking. I love Corbin Carroll as much Man's as Man's in the kitchen. Man's doing some cooking right now. What do we got? Gun to his head. Rather, all right. I guess I'd rather have Trey Turner because he plays short stuff. I mean, uh, also, I mean, what has Corbin, Corbin Carroll done this series? They I mean, won't run. He's, but he's that's not what we're asking. We're asking what, what's going to happen tomorrow. Necessarily, not necessarily what happened in the series predicates that. Like, 83 World Series. Eddie Murray, two home runs that, that game. He had a horrible series, and he gets two home runs in the clinching game. Like, what happened four games before is isn't matter right it bothered me more than it should have that he didn't run in either first inning in game one or game one or two leads the off the game waiting for it leads off it, the game reaching uh yeah. reaching first first one was on an error second one's on a hit if i remember correctly and just sits at first base and i know timing and all this and jt's got an arm yeah but man you stole 40 54 bags this year that's part of like what you can have an advantage on in this game especially like that's a way to like get energy quick on your side and you just stand there that bothered me more than it should have that he did not attempt to run like all right you get thrown out whatever it's better than just fucking staying on first of all everyone just like gets out in front of you asked and you like i don't know carl i know i think we were talking about the group or whatever or no sorry it was chuck nice chuck um but it's just like you know it wheeler's tough to time or nola one of those two was really tough to time that inning i get that you gotta fucking take a chance one time man so you got yeah. 54 stolen bases i trust you like go yeah, maybe because I had runs of the first in game two. So. Maybe <laughs> I did win that. Oh, really thanks yeah. to trade. Thanks to trade Turner, I did win that. But uh, that bothered. That's fair. I that I mean, you know, that goes back to you know the playoffs. You got to play your game. You know, yeah. that's part right. of it. That's like mm. almost freezing. It's not freezing, man. It kind of is freezing. Like it's that's just your bread and butter, Corbin Carroll. Like let's go. He had two um, steals the last series, but I wonder if there are. And this might be from a coaching top down. I don't know. If they're being more conservative because Real Muto is behind the plate, or if it's a Corbin yeah, Carroll thing, I don't know. I hate that. They, they don't want to run it out. You're but the still, underdog in the series. Like you're you're playing with house money. Go for it. What are you fucking holding back for? That's the risk you run. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, we'll see. Um, has been nice to see the Diamondbacks bullpen. Like they won them two games. Arizona's yeah. bullpen yeah. won them games three and four. And I was going back and forth with uh, Mark from Philly. He, he calls in the pick central. And he was just going nuts over the last two years, stats and all this. And was like, and it, I ended up just, you know, conceding to the point where, like, it's more of a gut feeling than what I've watched in eye test. But, like, hey, man, Kimbrell's been fucking awful. And that was is locked down, and Seawald's been good. Like, it's, it's been, and Alvarado is disgusting. Like, you don't yeah. want to run into him, obviously. But Kimbrell is a big weakness for them. And maybe they're, you know, it looks like I think they're going to get through this series. But in the World Series, that is a big fucking problem. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you have a close lead in the ninth inning tomorrow, do you still go to Kimbrell? Yeah, you yeah. have to. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you especially have to. With, especially if you have a game insurance, you, you, have, you have to give him confidence. 
Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, his, it's his job. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Percentage question. What percent chance do the Diamondbacks have to win this series? 25. 30. They have a 30%. 30. Chance. 30. 30. Percent. High. Wow. I, I, I was saying like 15. I, I'm more in that. And I, I would be lower if, um, because Fott is wanting it for game seven, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. It would well, be a Tuesday. Simple so probability Tuesday. would say that they're like at best a 23% clip because they're probably a 47% chance to win tomorrow for a 46% chance. And then at game seven, they'd be a 50% chance or something. You know, anything could happen in a game seven. Tomorrow. Okay. Um, and having Ranger lined up for seven, not a guy you probably want to face in that type of game. Yeah. Um, point. I'd put it, I'd put it like a 12%. I mean, it's, it's low. You yeah. could convince me though on Fat Tuesday, Fat Tuesday, you could get me there. I mean, he'd be a little higher. Miro Kelly and Brandon Fat aren't horrible options. I think it's I think it's thirty percent. I think that basic arithmetic would put it somewhere around nineteen to twenty one percent. I think a simple coin flip probability puts it at a square twenty five percent. And I believe that the Diamondbacks, if they win Game Six, should be favored in a Game Seven. Oh, favored yeah. in Philadelphia? Yeah, I oh, said it. A, yeah, they, I think they win game. game. I think they win Game Six. It's like the Marlins when they came into Wrigley in 03. It's like, dude, if you win game six, you're winning game seven. Like, there's just, like, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't you care I'm, you think who's I'm more talented. Betting against, you think no. I'm betting against a team with Bryce Harper in a game seven? You don't Bryce care who's more talented? I'm, I, it happens plenty of times before, Clemmer, where the team yes. that feels better plays better. I'm, I care about the team that plays better. You know, so I, think the Diamond, like un- I think if the Diamondbacks, I'm saying if the Diamondbacks win, the Diamondbacks aren't going to win game six. They're severe underdogs in game six here. Aaron Nola at home, nobody beats the Phillies in Citizens Bank Park. If the Diamondbacks pull it off, which would be less surprising than them winning game four and losing game five. Like they won game three and four at home. They lost both Zach Gallon starts. Like we're already living in a bizarro land in the series. So I'm saying... If they somehow okay. win the Merrill Kelly start and they roll in a game seven with Brandon Fott pitching against Ranger Suarez, like they got the first at bats of that game. I don't know. You could see a two nothing game going to the bottom of the first inning. And that's I'll why I think it's a 30%. Fine, 28%. Everybody feel better? 28%. Yes. Sure. I'll give you the the expected nervous feeling that like would come over that clubhouse of like fuck. Like we we can bleed this park, and yeah. man, if we blow a three two lead here, all at home, like, you know, are we ever gonna fucking win with this team here? Like, this is a golden opportunity then for to get back to the World Series, and you know, and and you know, slay that dragon for them. Like, yeah, there's a pressure that adds to that, and that definitely favors Arizona. But I don't think overall in the game, I would favor that to Game Seven. That's a little much. But like you said, like we always, you know, like Game Seven's fucking. Anything All happens. Point, That's why I don't yeah. care about it lines. Game seven, I think I think almost every game seven should be minus one ten, minus one ten. That's there's yeah, reason, one there's game, reason behind crazy that. shit happens. I, I have yeah, and fishing and managers like empty in the clip. Yeah. There's, there's, there's reason. There's 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 logic behind that. I myself would still favor the team with Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Chris uh Nick uh almost like Chris Castellanos. Uh <laughs> Nick Castellanos. You, you, you're not the first. You're not yeah. the first to do that. Yeah. Um so yeah. I don't want to get too far into it because we'll obviously have all we talk about it. But I was just thinking that, you know, we talk about how Kimbrel has been a problem and yeah. could be a problem in a World Series. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're old enough, you remember 1993, the Phillies had a closer that, that caused them some problems. And like, yeah. imagine that happens again to those four people who are my age or older. It's just like, oof, that's, that's tough. Kimbrel has got to get his shit together. No, no. Brad Lidge is going to be, some- Brad Lidge is going to be somewhere smoking a cigarette being like, well, and so this is easy, guys. And yeah. Williams is next to him. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lidge, Lidge was great in 08. He shit the bed in 09. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Br- Brad Lidge did not re- did not blow a save in 2008, right? Right, he was the man. Yeah, I think he was like 51 of 51 or something. Yeah, I was yeah. referring more to 93 of Mitch Williams. Mm. Yeah. Wild thing, Mitch Williams. That's right. former, c- former Cub legend. Great mullet. Always wet. Always a wet mullet like that. 
When is the first World Series game, regardless of these outcomes? I was going to ask that. Is it Friday? Friday? It's Friday. Friday, Friday, which means if the games are over tomorrow, right? so if Philly wins tomorrow, then we will have a World Series preview out. We'll have a World Series preview out, I believe, on Wednesday morning or Wednesday night. Yeah, and no matter what, you're going to see Zach Wheeler. Oh, assuming the Phillies win, excuse me. You'd see Zach Wheeler on the rubber, obviously, for game one. Yeah. Okay. We've got Phillies one, Rangers two, Astros three, Diamondbacks four. Hubs, you have one, you have a question, multiple questions. I can answer one as quick, many well, as you this have. This involves, this involves yes or no's from everyone. And we just got Nathan Ivoli pitches tomorrow, yes or no? Yes. Or tonight, yes or no? Yes. I think there's a better chance Jordan Montgomery pitches. That's what I'm going. I'm going to say no, but we do see Monty. I, I think we see both. Does, does Justin Verlander pitch? No. Nah, he's... Uh, only hit oh, 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 Clemmer's got the look. Hey, uh, hey, I, I, is I, there I, a I, time I, when Verlander and Scherzer are on the mound against each other? Yeah. That would be amazing. Dude, come on. Bring Verlander in for the tank. six. Frank Scherzer's <laughs> We would be able to see the the mushroom cloud from Frank the Tank's implosion if those two guys. I think I'll be in the same room with Frank. We're doing God the stream Buster. tomorrow, and uh, that no, I I think I don't I, honestly. If Scherzer's out there in the fifth, I'll be shocked. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Scherzer to me doesn't go past the third inning. You use Verlander in the ninth or something like, or in the eighth, I guess, to get into press. Well, yeah. It's, well, especially if Abreu suspended. Right, and you, you, you need in your good point, hearing, good point. And you don't trust Montero, yeah. clearly. No. You just trust Presley, really. You don't trust Stanek either, clearly. Oh, <laughs> after Neris. Yeah, Neris has been good, but Neris sure. did a lot today. Like, you know, you can't, he, I mean, he's punching the ground. He's doing all crazy, spiking the ball. He's all, I loved it. Like, let's go. I think, uh, I think Hunter Brown's going to be a key piece of this oh, ball. Hunter Brown. Oh, I yeah. like Hunter Brown a lot. I like be, Hunter Brown out of the pen. He'll be good. He'll so he's good. good. Hunter Brown's good out of the pen. Eh. Hunter Brown is not Hunter the same Brown. If, like if they pitch Hunter Brown, in the Rangers are going to the World Series. I agree. How about that? that? If Hunter Brown pitches I'm, in that game tomorrow, the Tyson Rangers are going to the World Series. I, I think he's going to pitch like Hunter Brown, really. and I like his potential for sure. He just looks so bad at the end of the year. He little, did, poop, he little, little poopy pants. Little poopy pants. As starter, out of the pen, I like him a lot more. Little poop. That's fair. Yeah. Give yeah. me a scenario so, where the Rangers are tied or have a little bit of a lead and a roll to Chapman's touch it. Give me Boys, we're that. lucky. This is going to be a special game, Zevin. Some of the names we're throwing yeah. out there, Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, Roldis Chapman. I mean, these are good ones. These are How good ones. How many Hall of Famers are playing in this game? Probably good six. Quest. The three Altuve, that I did. Verlander, Altuve. Scherzer, Verlander. Corey Seager. Maybe. Maybe yeah. Jordan. Maybe. Um, I think you're down Bregman, Bochi, Bregman, Dusty, Bochi yeah. probably dust. He uh, will probably Dusty, dude. It's got to be Dusty. He will be. So, he will be. He will be. If he doesn't, if he doesn't win another World Series, I don't know if he gets in. He's beloved, dude. He'll get it. I think he gets him. Chapman. No. Chapman well, should. Didn't Chapman should. We did. It's an interesting. Chapman should get in the Hall of Fame. We still I haven't really, know. we still haven't really figured out relief pitcher Hall of Fame resumes yet. Outside of yeah, haven't. Rivera, like we haven't figured, like because it's not a great position from a value standpoint. But he is one of the greatest closers of all time. So is Kimbrel. The problem is though, he may be the fourth best closer of his generation because Kenley's better than him, uh, Kimbrel's better than him, and uh, who am I forgetting? Is better than him. Wagner? No, 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 that's no it's not the generation. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear generation. Liam Hendricks. Hater. Maybe maybe it is just Fuck three. Josh maybe. Hader. No, maybe maybe it is just three. Kimbrel one, Austin. Chapman two, Jansen three. No. Come on. Yeah. 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 Why? Do we gotta do a little fucking J we gotta do a little quick little Jansen versus Chappie. I'm more of a Jansen guy. I like the consistency. Uh, I, I I would much rather have Jansen on my team. Correct. Correct. But he doesn't like have the he doesn't have like the legendary I do think some of the Hall of Fame stuff has to be the aura and the legend and like the. It's not fair though. Like his him and Kimbrel's stats are almost exactly the same. If you look at their like wild. Kimbrel's Kimbrel's 
if you had to pick one of the three to be in the Hall of Fame, it's clearly Keg, uh, Craig yeah. Kimbrell. But they have the it same is. stats as Jansen. Don't no, he doesn't. He no, he really does. It's wild. You don't okay. think of it that way because Kimbrell's peak was so high, but his low was so low. Where Jansen was always right in the middle. It's it's Kimbrell did have a few like quite bad years. It's crazy to look at it like stacked next to the but Jansen. You could say has had a better career barely than Kimbrell. It's wild. The best relievers in left in the playoffs: Jose Alvarado, Presley, Abreu suspended, yeah. Dinkle. Ginkle. Ginkle. That's my boy. I love him. We got to get Ginkle on the show. Coming to you guys this <laughs> week. World Series preview with Ginkle and Hops. I'm a Ginkle man. <laughs> I love Ginkle. Uh, okay, so you we're going to be. Mantiply on uh, Pick Central. Great guy. Was he regular Joe? Awesome. Awesome. Him and Gallon were great. Former Tiger. Yeah. Sneak that one in there, Castellani. Uh, <laughs> this is Barstool. This is Barstool Baseball. We will be back this week with the World Series preview. Uh, game seven. Go Rangers. Good luck to both teams. Hopefully nobody gets hurt. We'll see you guys later.